my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to the fastest 30 minutes in broadcast, and um, we're going to move on. Living with loving me. Now, y'all know we're not going to be able to read the whole story. Prophet Johnson, well, we'll finish by Christmas time, don't you think? That will give us a hundred plus series. It doesn't matter. Here it goes. In Genesis, welcome to that fastest 30 minutes. Y'all know what to do. Call a friend, neighbor, let them know we're on. I'm just trying to keep this thing here tight and right. Don't want it too far. Don't want it, you know. Here it goes. And um, Genesis 45 and 27. And they told him of all the words of Joseph, which he said unto them. And when he saw the wagons with jo which Joseph had sent to carry him. Now, this is Jacob. His son then came back and said, okay, daddy, Joseph is alive. And in verse number 25, um, they came into the land of Canaan unto their father and told him, saying, Joseph is yet alive. He is the governor over all the land of Egypt. Now think about it. The governor over all the land of Egypt. What would you do if you were the government, no, the governor? No, not over the land of Egypt back then in those days. I mean, it took divine inspiration for that. That was rough. Uh, that, was, that was equivalent to earthquake and forest fires and stuff here. If you were the governor over this land or this state or that state, what would you do? Well, and it came to life that day. That's right. It really came to life that day, didn't it? Mm -hmm. What would you do? Prophet Johnson, what would you do? Real simple. <laughs> Real simple. You know, but then you got to get people that you got people working with you, senators, uh, but, but you still got some power, right? But Prophet Johnson, what would you do? Take care of the people. What? Yeah, just like Joseph, you just take care of the people. How are you going to do that? You're going to do it. You govern. You're going to figure it out. you going to figure it out. See, that's right. You're going to figure it out. I, I, I already know I'd be their worst nightmare. I'd be their worst nightmare. Not with what I know now, I'd be their worst nightmare. I need to run for governor or senator or something. I need, I'm serious, y'all. I need... I'm, you know what I'm thinking about that? I'd like a run for some. I know some of y'all said dog catcher. I don't mind getting bit up a little bit. bit. You know what? I have to think about that. That's really something to think about. I might have to run for something one day, y'all, right quick. I'm not too old to do it now. I got a few years left on the old wheel. I know one stuck in the mud, but I'm still turning. Here it is. And, uh, I know some of y'all getting a good laugh. Go laugh it on out. <laughs> I know y'all getting a good laugh on that one. Laugh that no doubt. Some of y'all can't even breathe from laughing so hard at that. Yeah, Prophet Johnson talking that stuff ain't going to do nothing. Mug ain't going to do nothing. Here it is. Uh, Felicia, you better be quiet. Here it is. And told him, saying, Joseph is yet alive. He is governor over all the land of Egypt. And Jacob's heart fainted, for he believed them not. Could you imagine the feeling? My God, my son is yet alive. We're going to move on because we read this yesterday in closing. And they told him all the words of Joseph, which he had said unto them. And when he saw the wagons, which Joseph had sent to carry him, the spirit of Jacob, their father, revived. He said, God, my son ain't lying for the first time. <laughs> They're telling the truth. Could you imagine? The man's about to die. What's, what's, what's going to give him life now? His son is going to give him life. 
And Israel said, it is enough. Could you see? Have you ever? You ever been to a Thanksgiving dinner? <laughs> this is the best way for me to say it. And I got to tell y'all straight up, because my mouth is Googling up right now. And you got that turkey engraving with that giblet dressing. You got that cream style corn. You got fried chicken leg and a fried chicken wing. You got them butter peas. You got them taters and gravy. Prophet Johnson, that's enough. You got the cranberry sauce. And you done ate all of that. Then they come over there and say, you ready for dessert? <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. <laughs> and you stuff in the dessert. Throw you in a salad. Should have ate that first. No, I don't believe in that. I eat salads last, except I'm in a cuisine place where I'm starving to death. I eat it first. But a salad breaks the appetite. I don't care what nobody say. Salad messes you up, fills you up. They bring out the red main course. You wasting your money. I tell the way to keep my salad sometimes. All depends on how hungry I am and what's coming. And what happens? You get to a point to where they say we're going to bring in the extra hors d'oeuvres. You got a seven course meal coming through, you know. You ever had a seven course meal? I have. And uh, eight course or something like that. They feed you all day constantly, but little portions. And you get to the point, you say, well, it's enough. That is enough. You know, like uh, uh, Mrs. Moore on TV, give me more, give me more, give me more. When, when are we going to say it's enough? Do you think that governors and senators and congressmen and greedy people is going to say enough money is enough money? It's never enough. I don't understand it to this day. A mind cannot even phantom it. You see, billionaires and millionaires and rich people, it is so easy to spend all the money. It's so easy to do it. How, Prophet Johnson, you're going to search out the kingdom. You see, you're going to search it out. You're going to find Africa. You're going to find Venezuela. You're going to find Brazil. You're going to find God's people. And you're going to build that by feeding, by working, planting and supplanting and putting the work and making that cycle rotate right within the house, right within that kingdom. Just put it out there. Put it out there. God will take care of the rest. Because there are people out there that genuinely love God. Real Christians, real missionaries. There are real people of God that is not full of hatred. They are not full of racism. They love God. They love the kingdom. But they don't want to be misused and abused by people of their own race, of their own kind, of their own character. When you look at the schools that are needed, the deaths, the children, the line to feed the children program, the line to dig a well program, all liars from the pit of hell. You put feet on the ground, boots on the ground. You bring them babies together, those villages. Oh, it's so much you can do. You'll be broke in no time. Oh, no, you won't. You'll never be broke. Never, ever be broke. Your supply will never run out. God will give you an Elijah in the widow woman blessing. The more you give and the more you serve, the more he'll increase. You build in kingdom, not Christian hypocrites. You understand? We were building people of our own races, own color, own kind that were nothing but a bunch of snaky, sneak hell raisers, fooling everybody in the church. Come on now. I've seen some dirty mothers and some dirty bishops, some dirty pastors, some dirty evangelists. 
I've seen a lot of dirty Christians that call themselves Christians. <laughs> Y'all have no idea. First ladies, dirty. Armor bearers, dirty, please. And y'all call them Christians, please. I've seen it all. I've seen this. And so he revived. So he said, look at what he declares. And we closed out here last night. And Israel said, enough. It, it, is, it is enough. When are we going to say that? When are we going to say that? The fervent, effectual prayer of a righteous man of valid much. That's why I love you. That's why I love you so much. You see, we can't talk like this live on the air. We're going to get in trouble, you and I, Jesus, because we got something going on. Yeah, we got something going on. That's right. Yes, sir. That's why I love you so much. Oh, God, help me, please. I know it, son. I know you. They don't know you, but I know you enough to know that you will. You will do it. You will do it. I'm telling them. I'm telling them. Enough is enough. When you've had enough, when you've been sick and tired of enough, you're going to get your vision. You're going to make it plain. You're going to write it up on tables that he may run. He that run may read it it. Bible declares, buy the truth and sell it not, which eliminates half the church. Eliminates 99% of the Christians, you see. Because the programming is ongoing. I mean, I'm trying to, God help y'all, help y'all, help y'all, help y'all. Jesus help you. The programming is ongoing. Every Sunday they're being programmed. Every Sunday, through Bible study, through Sunday school, through the pastor's preaching, going back to work, and serving society, robotic style. What are you trying to say? There's no karate. There's no turning of the neck or the cutting of the throat as the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world upon the throne. There's none of that. There, there, it's not really happening. What do you mean? Because you as an individual, you better hear me. You best hear me. This belongs to you. You are this. It is you. You've got to know this as an individual and live your life the best you can according to the word of God and not be divinely manipulated or divinely inspired by some pseudo mechanism of emotion and ongoing forces. I can show you how it works. <clears throat> you got it? Example. Here it comes. Here it comes. Let me show you now. <coughs> I'm just going to open up my Bible to any passage. Okay? I'm going to read any passage and show you how this works. I open it to 1 Kings chapter number 18. Elijah at Mount Carmel. Show you how it works. So Arab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt you between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him, Not a word. I want to know who you going to follow today. Are you going to follow Jesus? Or are you going to follow the devil? I know that the Lord said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Now, can I get a witness? It's time to turn your life around. Elijah had to stand up and say, how long are you going to be halt between two opinions? Give me an amen, church. That's enough, Prophet Johnson. No, no, no. See, I want to get to your emotions. 
I want to really appeal to your emotions, even though now I'm being a little bit of corrected because God let me know this is for real. I'm really asking my people how long are they going to be halted between two opinions. I'm saying, God, I just flipped the Bible open just to have fun. The Lord said divinely inspired, even with all that, you're still training and teaching them. So let me move you a little bit further. No, no, I'm going to move you a little bit further. Then said Elijah unto the people, I even I only remain a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's, <coughs> but Baal's prophets are 450 men. What? And Elijah said, I, I'm by myself. I, I got to stand uh, against the prophets of Baal. Uh, but he didn't know uh, that God had 7,000 uh, that didn't bow down to Baal. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, when you don't bow down, uh, God will raise up in your life. Uh, touch five people and say it's time to get up. It's time to get up. Lord, let me get a little drink while they're touching each other. Mm -hmm. uh, Julene, what time is it? I got to get out of here. Oh, you got about five minutes more, Pastor. Oh, praise him. Praise him. Love it, don't we? Not just that. Great and swelling words. Let me show you how it works. Great and swelling words right quick. Jeremiah 14, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah concerning the dearth. Judah mourned it, and the gates of thereof languish. They were black unto the ground, and the cry of Jerusalem is gone up. Their nobles have sent their little ones for water. They came to the pit and found no water. They returned with their vessels empty. They were ashamed and confounded and covered their heads. My brother and sisters in Christ, God don't want you to go to the water and come back with empty vessels. He wants your vessels to be full. And I can tell you, obviously, inside of this church, there are a lot of cracked vessels here. But I want you to know that the healer and the savior and the deliverer of time is in this place now. Will you say to God, Lord, fill my vessels. Fill it with the all of gladness, the new wine, and give me new vestures of new wine skin. Will the choir you sing? And we'll do a little hymn though. Sing B, A, over C, D minus plus. Bring it in the sheaves. Bring it in the sheaves. We will come rejoicing. Bring it in the sheaves. Wonk, 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 wonk. Wonk, 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 wonk. Look at Julene hair piece. She bought that from uh, Tiffany. We will be rejoicing. Bring. Did you see brother uh, Wiggles? He got a new pair of shoes on. Uh, my granddaddy sold them to him at the yard sale. Bring it in the sheets. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Prophet Johnson, are you serious? I'm serious. Your program. They're programmed everywhere. And Israel said, it is enough. Joseph, my son, is yet alive. I will go and see him before I die. There'll still be a process of time. God going to give them time to get it together now. <coughs> Excuse me. The family's still going to be tripping. The family's still going to be a fa They They're going to be still crazy. But just look at this, all them years. We got to hurry, y'all. God, let's, Jacob and his family is getting ready to go to Egypt. Could you imagine that? Green Acres is the place to be. Think about it. You living in the project. Somebody called you up in California. 
They say, let's go. They call you to Hollywood. Think about it. How many folks win all that lottery tickets money and, and call y'all? And none of them. None of them. When they do win, what do they do? They get their family, they move to Colorado and get them a farm. They go buy lands and houses. It doesn't matter. As long as the kingdom is forgotten, it's a test. This world is full of money. Full of money. Full of money in America. And I don't understand why all the people keep going to New York and Chicago. That is the craziest thing in the world. Mexicans, I call all y'all Mexicans, whatever you are. Can y'all go to other places? They got every... It, it, why do y'all keep dropping them off there? The, the Mexicans here won't even work for black people. They won't even work for black people. We tried to get, get some to do some work, and I did anyway. I'm just going to be personal with you. I did. I tried to get a Mexican to do some work for me. The Mexican wouldn't even call me. <laughs> Having to do it, the Mexican wouldn't even would he, would he call me. He worked for the white folks. Whole crew of whole yes sir me and me gotta go I I I call you you call me this night yeah yeah man I need your help I need to get a few guys man get some work done man come on now yeah that me call me up do the ring do the ring do the ring do the ring let me I go back it up in that hello leave me no no I'ma take you to Colorado because they gracias I say Mr Miyago this is me Mr Leo. Me need the work, oh, will you come in and give me the call he back, oh? I didn't get no answer. No answer, the call he the nigger, oh. <laughs> Boys, please. Genesis, no, yes, I am, I'm Prophet Johnson, y'all. Genesis 46 and verse number one. And Israel took his journey with all that he had and came to Beersheba. You know, <laughs> you know, Pharaoh told him to leave that job. J Jacob said no. He just like Grandma Annie knows them. Just like some of y'all that hoard up stuff. He can't throw away. Jacob can't throw away them little tight pants, them little tight plaited pants he got up on his butt. And he know he can't even wear them no more because he got a little belly. You know, Jacob can't even wear them pants no more. He's going to take all that little stuff he done left. All that little junk. Jacob load up his stuff just like Granny and moving it up there with him. <laughs> Here it comes. And, and he offered sacrifices unto God, <coughs> unto the God of his father and Isaac. Y'all, it's something going around, I'm telling you. I, this, this is something going around. It's a bug, and, and ever since, man, they found out about them burn pits stuff. Man, that stuff been happening to me for years, y'all. I'm telling you, chest, all kind of stuff, breath, everything. You, you don't think that stuff would happen. I mean, that stuff is real. When you see the soldiers like me and others suffering from this, I don't know what that thing is. That stuff is real, y'all. That's real. Okay? I'm just going to tell y'all. That burn pit stuff is real. Those chemicals, whatever that junk was, that stuff is real. Okay? I'm telling y'all that. God knows I'm telling y'all. And I've been telling it for years and been suffering with the same thing for years. And whatever it is, I don't even know. And here it is. It, uh, prophet Johnson, you're a prophet. I, didn't the devil fool me all my life? So be quiet. Here it is. I only hear God for you. Okay? Not for me, except when he needs to save me from something. And and offer sacrifices like to God. And, and, and Father Jacob would say, God, God, get the altar. <laughs> bring, bring the goat. Bring the calf. The nigga said, Lord, I thank thee. Here I come. Throw him on there, God. This is the last meal. Burn him up. God sit up there saying, Jacob, Jacob said, Lord, hurry up and eat. And God is up there eating good, eating good. Jacob said, Lord, you better hurry. I got to get up out of here. He made God a sacrifice before he left. How many of us has really blessed people or blessed the city or blessed the church or blessed the family or blessed someone before we left their presence that's been gracious to us? How many of us has really thanked God before we went and did anything? You done prayed to God to, to get into school. Let me show you how it happened. You done prayed, young man, to God to get into school. The school. And, and you got Daddy Mayberry right around the corner. 
And Daddy Mayberry will always encourage you, son, you know, you do this. Son, you come on over here and get something to eat. Well, guess what? You finally get into that school. All right? And when you get into that school, the first thing you think about is Daddy Mayberry. And you say, Lord, I got to go and thank Daddy Mayberry. What do you do? You run back and you thank him. And when you succeed, what do you do? You make sure you give Daddy Mayberry a gift. That's being thankful, y'all. You offer what you can and you thank who you can with what you got. Jacob is thanking God. I'm finally out of this hellhole. You know, the happiest thing in the world is to watch a poor person. <laughs> you know, I'm going to tell y'all something. To watch poor people get a new car. Y'all ain't seen that like. The whole family pile in the car. The whole family. The happiest thing in the world is to see bone though them riding a the bicycle get a car. Taking care of it, cleaning it up. Or even a moped. That's the happiest thing in the world to see, y'all. Is to see poor people happy. I know one fella that went down there and did some work, and he cleaned up, and he's a good good friend of the family related to him and all the good stuff, and I can't call no name. But I was so happy to see that after he came back from doing all that work and cleaning up damages out of town, he was outside in the yard, and he was getting down outside the car, just a boogie-woogie dancing. I mean a boogie in a woogie that brother would get down. I ain't never seen that. He had a cigarette longer than from the reach from heaven to earth. He had a long old cigarette. I mean, and he was getting on down with old. That means he was boogie. Had money in his pocket. And then somebody said about two weeks later, he won't be shout, shouting the most and he'll be broke. In about two weeks, he, he walked around slobbering because he didn't have no money. He was broke in about two weeks. But it was good to see him happy for one day. <laughs> he made a lot of money, too. That's for real. I'm closing, Cap. This is the last verse. We'll pick this up tomorrow. I'm having too much fun, y'all. Here it go. This is why I read it the other day. I got to close. We'll pick it up tomorrow. And God spake unto Israel in the visions. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Joseph had a vision. God spoke to Israel in a vision. Air of the night and said, Jacob, Jacob. And he said, here I am. We got to close. And he said, I am God, the God of thy father. Fear not to go down to, into Egypt, for I will, I will, for I will there make of thee a great nation. And, and I'll pick it up tomorrow. And I will go down with thee in Egypt. And I will also surely bring thee up again. And, and, and Joseph uh, 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 shall put his hand upon thine eyes. Uh, and you go see again boy don't worry about deliverance is in the house suffering been long enough y'all gonna have to go through your children got to go through for 400 years they gonna be afflicted but I'm bringing out my will get them together the children of Israel this is I'll see y'all tomorrow night. I can't wait.